Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will attempt to show you how I went about rebuilding a stabilizer cylinder for my backhoe. My backhoe is a 510C John Deere and it's about 20 years old. Anyway, to start, remove the snap ring and then the pin that holds the end of the cylinder to the shoe. Prop it up, place a bucket under it because you will lose oil. With a spanner wrench and a hammer, loosen and remove the nut on the end of the cylinder. Sometimes a little leverage comes in handy. When you finally do get the nut off, you'll find behind it a plastic seal, a large ring type plastic seal that comes out of there and uh, make note of that because you'll have to have a new one on there when you put it back together. It will not slide over the end of the cylinder rod. It will go over the end with the bowl on it. Also, when you t before you pull this uh, cylinder rod clear of the cylinder, it would probably be a good idea to clean it up in there as much as possible because rust and crap does accumulate on the end of the cylinder. Any events, remove the nut, remove the hoses, which is what you see me doing now. Loosen the clamp that holds the hose so that you can slide it back out of the way. And be careful, on, on each hose end is a, uh, where it connects to the cylinder, you'll find a small rubber O-ring. Be careful you don't lose those. Now as you can see, the next step is to remove a large round snap ring that holds the gland into the end of the cylinder. This can be a little troublesome. Took me a little while to get it out of there. I ended up getting a, f a small drift pen, sharpening the end of it, like a almost like a pencil, in order to once you, in order to get it started, once you get it started, it, it come out okay. Next, put a bar through the end of the rod and hit it with a hammer. It should come out of there, and once she comes out, there'll be some oil come out with it. I like to wrap things in rags, keep the dirt out of them, as you saw me do there at that point there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure the end of the rod to the shoe of the tractor and using a bar, an you know, inch and three quarter inch socket, 45 millimeter socket, my wife and I were able, was able to remove the bolt. It takes a lot of leverage to remove that bolt. Now, the rod can be disassembled. The nut and piston, uh, the, the bolt and piston come off the end. And then you slide the gland off the shaft. The gland is the part that holds the seals. That seal the, the rod and the, uh, from leaking around the cylinder end.
using a screwdriver as gently as carefully as possible and taking note of the direction of that the seals face within the gland remove all the old seals and shims and whatever else is in there and replace it with new just be very careful how you take it apart so that you put it back together the same way this section of the video it takes a little while to get through even though I shortened it up considerably you may want to fast forward it if you don't find it interesting I use the white piece of PVC pipe as a device to hold the old parts as I took them out. So I could put them on the pipe facing in the direction that they faced in the, within, in the gland and at the same time keeping them in the correct order. probably be a good idea to take notes as you take things apart. There are two kits uh, to rebuild a cylinder. A rod kit and a cylinder kit. And to do the entire cylinder to replace both kits. Something to keep in mind. Kits, they were way cheaper than the John Deere uh, OEM parts. What I did find was that the the rod, I really didn't need a rod kit, the rod seals looked fine. It was uh, the seals in the gland that, uh, that were pretty beat up and leaking. Be sure you oil up everything real well. As you, when you try to put the seals into the gland, be sure you soak them in oil real well because otherwise they have a, they're a little difficult to get in. The more oil, the better. When you work the new seals into the into the gland and onto the uh, the piston of the cell of the cylinder rod, you don't want to use objects. You just want to kind of push them in there with your fingers if you can, uh, so that you don't damage them. Then, once it's all reassembled, we take it outside, reattach it to the foot of the stabilizer, and using a large socket, 45 millimeter socket, and a couple of large bars, my wife and I are able to retorque the bolt into the end of the rod, as you can see. Now before you put this rod back into the cylinder, make sure you slide that large orange plastic O-ring that it goes in the cylinder between the gland and the cylinder nut. You can slide it over the bolt and packing end of the rod. You cannot get it over the uh, the big end of the rod where it, that attaches to the foot of the stabilizer. 
clean everything up real well clean the end of the cylinder up real well I, I didn't show it on the on the video but I cleaned it up with sandpaper and I used a cylinder hone on the last inch or so of that cylinder to remove and smooth all the rust and dirt deposits that were there clean them up clean it up real nice you don't want to be scarring up your new seals when you slide them into the cylinder you want that cl as clean as possible and greased up now you see in the video I am putting the rod back into the cylinder next after we get the rod in most of the way uh, the, the gland is pushed into the end of the cylinder uh, I knocked it in with a hammer and a piece of uh, lumber, small piece of 2 by 3 as you see in the video or maybe not after the gland is put in place you have to put the you have to put the snap ring in which I, I'm not seeing in the video but the snap ring has to be put in first then the orange seal that I talked about goes on the end of the cylinder and you push that in with the nut The snap ring holds the gland in the cylinder and the nut compresses that orange plastic seal to seal off the end of the, and the end of the cylinder as you can see. Make sure everything is clean and smooth and greased and oiled when you put it back together. Then after we tighten the nut we can reattach the hoses put the pin back in the foot put the circlip back on as you can see reattach the hoses get a screwdriver and tighten up the clamp and basically as far as I think I think that's about it let's see what happens oh my and up she goes no leaks takes a couple times up and down to get the air out of the cylinder and as you can see everything is fine I sure hope you enjoyed my video